Welcome to the Medical Device School. So uh, here is Munir al with uh, Stefan Boleininger. <clears throat> and today we will uh, help you to understand how to audit your suppliers. So I know that uh, there is a lot of companies that have some uh, suppliers and um, they have to go and audit them. So how they should do that and more importantly, what they should do and what they should not do when going for auditing a supplier. So Stefan, what is your opinion on that? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if there is an absolute right or a wrong way on it, but for, for me, I can only tell you what I do during the supplier yeah. audit. I go to the, uh, first all that process stuff around it, like a plan, agenda, whatever. I, I want to go, I want to see if my supplier goes the way I want, want them to go. It's not about if they follow all ISO requirements and everything like that, all regulatory requirements. Nah, that's not, that's not my part. If they are inspected by FDA or a notified body or a ISO um, certification board, whatever, they can do that. Okay. But I want to see what is my outcome. My outcome is most, pro most probably a, some kind of product. And I want to know how this product is built. How is that product, if it's um, a physical product or a software, whatever, how is that created? And this is my, my, yeah, that is my objective, the outcoming product. So I go, okay, first half an hour or an hour, let's go on the general quality systems, da, 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 processes. Yeah, we have a certificate. We don't have a certificate. Okay, that's all fine. That's fine. And now let's get into the real data and into the real production or a process or the development. And then I can see, okay, they have a process. I know that from the mind, from the past, from the first hour, I know they have a process or not. But I, honestly, as a company who uses suppliers, I should at first know if they have a um, process or not for that specific case, because I should, if they don't have one, I should give them mine to make sure they do it the way I like it. Exactly. That's one of the key messages. They need to be prepared for what is my expectation. And then I go on the expectation and say, okay, have they followed their process if they have one? Okay. Or have they followed my process? And then I go dig by dig by dig and every piece of information I can achieve during the process, look at them. And for those suppliers who are really critical and most of my software or electronic suppliers are critical for me, I go in the way that I need to say, okay, Tell me your artifacts, your list of artifacts for a specific milestone. And then most suppliers know, oh, audit is coming. Please prepare documentation. <laughs> to be honest, I also did that in the past for a few of my clients. We also said, oh, oh, oh audit is coming. Let's check. Let's analyze all documentation and then check on it. Good. Okay. So as a clever auditor for my supply management, I want to... No, if they work according to these processes on the date, I don't look into it. Yeah. So I think, okay, what was your last milestone? Milestone was a half year in the past. In the past, that's fine. Then tell me what happened. Review protocol information about the milestone for if it's a the R D project or if it is was a um, um, was a pro uh, product. I take okay, give me your list of products you delivered to me. Take that list. Pick one of the batches or the products they created and say, okay, and now give me the design history record and the design master record for this specific delivery. That is what I want to see. Great. I want to see if they work against the, uh, work with the processes on the way I'm black, uh, on, uh, on the way I have my eyes closed. That is what I want to see and not if they have their quality management system because if they have one or not, I will find out during that. Yeah, and I think uh, one, one document here uh, which is important is the quality agreement or a document that where you specify exactly who is doing what, who is responsible for what. So you have also to check that and check that what they are responsible for is really uh, on, on their responsibility and you have the documents and the proof that they are doing that. Uh, I had off with one of my suppliers, we specified the specific um, parameters for a process uh, for our products and the objective was then when doing the audit to go and to check that those parameters are really used that the program is still the same that uh, there is no change on that uh, because they promised that uh, on the on the quality agreement that if there is any change they will inform us uh, so as we were not informed about anything uh, we go there and we check and if we find that they change something then we have here a non-conformity with the other with the, with the supplier and we ask them to uh, to correct that but yeah, as you mentioned, we don't, we are not auditors, we are not notified bodies, so we don't have to go and check 
uh, if uh, the Kappa system is really following every process of the ISO 13485, or if uh, this or that, etc. If they have a management review, I mean, it's my, not my problem, it's the problem of the supplier. So yeah, it's, it's clear that we have really to focus on our product and not on the system uh, that uh, is audited by anybody. And sometimes the suppliers are not audited by notified bodies. They don't have a really a quality system and everything. The objective, as you mentioned, is really to check that what they are delivering to us is correct and what we specified together is, is correct. Yeah. One, one thing to add, yeah. Um, yeah. because the system for the auditing and supply is a bit different, you need to be an expert on the topic they supply. Yeah. So for me, I can go on every electronic on software develop as a company. If they sell me some electronics or software, then it's fine. I can audit them because I have some knowledge on it. But I will never go to someone who, live, who delivers some biological containment or something like that, or sterile parts. I have no clue about that. So <laughs> the auditor needs to be precise on the scope. And that's one thing many clients don't do really in a very good, a good um, shape. That they have a standard auditor who is trained in audits, okay, but not the expert for that specific product part. Nice. Many of the suppliers can tell me about biology or chemistry. They can tell me everything. I need to believe it because I have no clue. That's true. As soon as they sound really scientific and professional and really uh, with a lot of numbers and a lot of names, acronyms, you say, oh, it looks like he knows more than me. And it, it, it sounds good. It sounds OK. <laughs> yes, absolutely. OK, Stefan, I think now uh, people know exactly what to audit uh, with their supplier, uh, and I hope they get the advice. Uh, so don't forget to go to podcast.easymedicaldevice.com. Uh, we will uh, put on uh, the show notes maybe some articles, some uh, things for you to read uh, on this topic. So um, thank you, and thank you, Stefan. Thank you.